Good evening, everyone. This is Bill Breeden. Welcome to Constellation Tour number 19. Tonight, we're going to talk about Lacerda, otherwise known as the Lizard. This uh, small, obscure constellation is in the northern celestial hemisphere, located between Cygnus and Andromeda, um, sort of actually between Cygnus and Cassiopeia. So, it's in sort of an ignored part of the sky. I have Stellarium tonight set up for a 60 degree field of view, um, simulating the view on October the 10th, 2020, at about 7.30 p.m. And I have it set up for moderate light pollution, simulating a suburban sky which is going to make an obscure and small and faint constellation like Lacerta all that more difficult to find. Um, Lacerta is best viewed between September and November, so it's an autumn constellation. So I have our software set up for mid-October. So let's start by finding Cygnus. And in October, in late summer and into the fall, Cygnus is the Northern Cross, and it's real high overhead. Looks like this is it here. It's the Northern Cross. So you have the tail, you have the head, here's Alberio, here's Deneb, and you have the wings going this way. So there's Cygnus. And let's look for Andromeda. Now, in October, it's easiest to find Andromeda by looking for the great square of Pegasus. And then the early fall, it's going to be rising in the east. So we're looking due east here. And you see these four stars in a square shape. That would be the great square of Pegasus. So in the area of sky, let's see, we have... You have to look way up high here to find Cygnus. There's Cygnus up there. And the reason we went for the Great Square of Pegasus is because that points our way to Andromeda. And Andromeda comes off of the Great Square of Pegasus with this line of stars going this way. So the, this line of stars here is Andromeda. And here's the Great Square of Pegasus. It looks like a giant dipper. It's too big to really see as a as a dipper easily so but it is shaped like a, a very large dipper so this line of stars here is andromeda so the area of sky between cygnus here and andromeda here here's cassiopeia so this blank area of sky right here should be lacerda the the lizard Let's turn on our constellation lines. And we see here's the great square of Pegasus. Here's Andromeda. And we look up high in the sky tonight for Cygnus the Swan. Whoops. And the area of sky between Pegasus and Cygnus and, off, and next to Cassiopeia is Lacerda the Lizard. Let's see what see how large it is it's a it's a small constellation just just next to Cygnus and Pegasus and Andromeda and Cassiopeia so those are the constellations and Cepheus these are the constellations that border Lacerda so it's sort of wedged in between here it's one of the smaller more obscure constellations let's have a look at the mythical figures and you'll see the lizard here and here's the head of the lizard and here's the body it's just these faint stars here and it occupies this region of the sky between Cygnus and Pegasus so that's that's how I find it you could come off of Cassiopeia to find it in the direction of Cygnus. So that might actually be easier. Just find Deneb and find Cassiopeia and draw a line between the two and Lacerda's in that region.
So there are no there are no outstanding stars in Lacerda. You can see just how faint these stars are. From the suburbs, you may not see anything. Uh, here's a fourth magnitude star. Here's a fourth magnitude. Here's a fourth magnitude. Here's a fourth magnitude. So it's it's basically a lot of fourth magnitude stars sort of in the jagged line here. So with no with no real bright stars, no double stars to look at, we do have one galaxy that we can search for. It's called BL Lacerti. So let's let's make it dark to see if we can observe Lacerta from a dark side, if that makes any difference. Let's situate ourselves in, under our dark sky here. Okay, here's the great square of Pegasus. And here's Cygnus the swan and Deneb is the tail. And here's the W shape of Cassiopeia. So Lacerda occupies this area of sky. Let's see how close I am. Oh, I'm pretty close. So now from a dark location, these fourth magnitude stars are a little brighter. So you may look for kind of a jagged line, a zigzag of stars here between Deneb and Cassiopeia. That might be your best way to try to see Lacerda from a dark site. Right in here. So let's look for the one galaxy I have on my list. And I'm not even sure it's going to be in Stellarium. And we'll find out here. Put it in the finder here. I don't think it's plotted. Let's put an eyepiece in. Doesn't look like anything showing up in that location. So it may just be, it's on my list here, but it may simply be too faint. So what I would do if I was at a dark site and I was really wanting to dive into Lacerda, Let's go back to naked eye view here. I would uh, I would use a star chart and see if there are any plotted deep sky objects here of interest. It looks like there's one plotted here. If we use Stellarium as a star chart, it's uh, an open star cluster, NGC 7243. It's located 2,600 light years from Earth, it's magnitude six. Um, I see here it's also on the Caldwell list. It's Caldwell 16. So let's have a look. Move our telescope this way. And the object is plotted in Stellarium. That doesn't mean that they have an image of it in here. All you see through the eyepiece here is just a plot where the open cluster would be. They don't have an image of it in the software. So being a Caldwell object, it may be worth looking for. That was the only object plotted at this level. Let's see if we can uh, find some other deep sky objects there in Lacerda. It's like another open cluster showed up. So we're really going faint here, folks. Uh, looks like there's something called the Star Lizard Cluster.
NGC 7209. It's magnitude 8. And let's see. This open cluster doesn't have a distance listed here. So let's have a look through the finder. Let's see. So this is, Lacerda is in a, in a beautiful area of the sky. I mean, being right next to Cygnus. And you know how I feel about Cygnus. So it's in the Milky Way. There's a lot of beautiful star fields here. It's probably worth a look to try to find this object, NGC 7209. Stellarium doesn't have an image of it here, but they do have it plotted. So I'd be curious to see what that what that cluster actually looks like. It's also on the calendar list, calendar 444. It looks like they have one more object plotted within the boundaries of Lacerda, and that is this one, IC1434. And that looks like it's right in the band of the Milky Way. So at the very least, if you, uh, if you searched for IC1434 uh, magnitude 9 open cluster, you'd be treated to a beautiful star field. The object itself, there's no image in Stellarium. Let's see, let's go for a wider angle. There we go. That's a 24 millimeter panoptic view. And you can see this, this little discoloration that they show here. That's actually background Milky Way. Okay. Okay, well, this was a, uh, a small constellation, a little bit obscure, but take the time to, uh, you know, to purposely seek out and observe objects in these, in these less known constellations, and sometimes you'll be rewarded. So, I, um, this concludes tonight's constellation tour. Good night and good seeing.